You, you bring up the meltdown thing. This is kind of an, an embarrassing thing to admit, but I'll tell a quick story. I'm um, curious your thoughts on it. My son Wilder's three, uh, and you know, probably on a year and a half, he started just having these meltdowns. You bring mm-hmm. them up, right? Mm-hmm. These just full on meltdowns. And it was crazy because my daughter never had that, but he would just, for 45 minutes, and it was almost perfectly the same amount of time every time, his brain would just go offline and he would, nothing we could do could calm him down, just gone. And happened one to two times every single day for about a year. Yeah. And it was just nuts. And at the same time, this is why it's an embarrassing thing to admit, like, the only way I could get him out of it, and and it wasn't even just because of that. We increased his amount of iPad, like YouTube kids stuff, right? And he started watching more and more of that over that, uh, you know, from the time he was about one. We we did pretty well up until about one, mm-hmm. keeping him off of it. And mm-hmm. then he, it just was su- such an easy babysitter. And when we, me and Heather just needed time to talk or we were in a car ride or whatever, it just became more and more until it was probably a couple hours a day that he was sitting sure. on screen time. And then I saw a TikTok video just, I don't know, four months ago, three months ago, of some guy. And he was just talking about how his kid was melting down every day. And then he took away the screen time and it ended. And I was like, okay, that's, we all know that. And we, you know, obvious advice and never, nothing yep. ever works perfectly like that. So I did it. I took away his screen time. I was like, let's just try it. Yeah. Um, and we took it away and it was the first day he didn't have a meltdown. And then no the next way. day, next day he didn't have a meltdown. And the next day he didn't have a meltdown. It was the first On time the in first a year. Day. First day. I have never wow. seen anything work that well. It reminded me of, a, there's a story of diabetics when they invented uh, insulin, where they uh, walk around the room, uh, this room of kids, they were all dying, uh, diabetic, and they're all, whatever the, the term is there, they were dying. And they, st- they put insulin in all of them the first time ever. Mm-hmm. And by the time they got around the room, the, the first person, they were already like better, like they're standing up. And it, yep. was, it worked so quick because insulin was like this miracle. Uh, it was like that. It, yep. it, he didn't, I mean, the first meltdown after that was maybe two weeks later and it was just, a, it was like, we we're leaving for the night for a date night. So it was a, a more predictable, like that would make sense. And it, it's silly to think that it was such a simple fix. And for a year, year and a half, even I knew the answer. Yeah. So why, like, why did screen time, mm-hmm. like watching fun videos, Blippi or Miss Rachel or whatever, they, like, why is that mm-hmm. clearly caused? this meltdown where it's brain shut off every single day. What is that? Yeah. So we are not recognizing as a society that screens and computers and like, if you think about it, like I grew up where it was the coolest thing when my dad got a phone in the car and Mm -hmm. it had like that spirally like, Hey, you know, like, I mean, we let's come, come on, like Zach Morris phone. We all know Uh (laughs) generally generationally what that means. And now we have little mini computers in our, in our eyes and in our faces. And our parents used to wait in line to like buy a ticket for a concert. Now, boop, Ticketmaster, done. Well, Ticketmaster is having some issues, but you know what I mean. <laughs> you, you know, like the world works so much faster and it's, oh God, I got to text them back. I got to do this. And so we are very focused in on screens and productivity and all the different thing. That screen is a visual stimulation. And so what it's doing is it's revving his engine. It's revving his brain to where he's in a heightened state. And so let's say he was doing well with it and then you take it away and that's when the meltdown happens. It's because his brain doesn't know it's the transition between that heightened dysregulated state or over stimulated state versus going back down to regulation. And most of my clients, I would say too, it's bringing it back from like the adult brain to the child brain is we don't know how to go down. We don't know how to step on the brake. It's gas and a brake yeah. kind of, if you think of your brain that way and learning how to throttle between the two is really what's important to find that mental health. Sometimes you've got to show up to the party and step on the gas. Sometimes you want to be able to step on that brake and slow down. But the difference in that throttle between the two is why that meltdown happens is because They don't know how to do it without the iPad. They Mm -hmm. don't know how to do it. And so they're having to come down with almost like an explosion of emotions within their brain. And it kind of goes haywire. But then the next time you ever see your children have a meltdown, because it will totally happen. Watch what happens after. It's like this pot of gold. They're like, oh, I love you, Uh daddy. It's so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. It's because it's an expenditure of immense amount of energy and it's when you choose to not regulate your brain your brain will find a way to do it for itself Mm. and so you know 
we as adults have that where it's like, I don't know why I'm crying, but I'm crying and I'm <laughs> like, and I don't know what to do. And then it's all of a sudden, like, how do you feel after that? Oh my gosh, I feel so much better. I feel so, so much better. But it's the, I, I just don't think that we as humans have been given this information to understand literally how our vessel functions and not again on a psychological level, but more on a neurological level of like, how does your engine run? Like, we have absolutely no idea. And so we are throwing iPads in front of our kids' faces because it's such a great babysitter. Like, yeah. I, I look, I get you, no judgment. Like, you do not have to shame yourself there. Like, plenty of people do it. But is it healthy for our brain overall? Probably not. Yeah, it makes me think of, you know, if that is, I mean, obviously his brain is, a, you know, two or three year old brain now. But what's that same thing doing for me, right? When we scroll TikTok, like, or Instagram or whatever, like the, that scrolling, I'm like, mm -hmm. it's clearly messing with me as well. And I can mm -hmm. feel a direct correlation between the amount of time I spend on my phone and my general depression or lack thereof, mm. right? I can feel it. And I'm like, oh, I've been on my phone a lot lately. I just feel off. I feel down. Yes. And, and the annoying part is then the solution my brain gives me to feel better is to go back on the phone and do more phone. Yes. And so like the, yeah, it's, it's like, Oh yeah, you don't feel good with the, you know you're having a little drug relapse. Get back on the get up back on the drug and you'll yep. you'll feel good again. Because it's the discomfort. Mm -hmm. It's it's the discomfort in your your brain from that. I like this feels good. Scroll, 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 yep. scroll, scroll, and like we like no one understands that the reason you're swiping is because your brain craves up and down motion like mm. you're not swiping left to right you're swiping <laughs> you're right, up yeah. and down and the creators of these apps knew that yeah. and that's why they do it and so your brain wants more of it and it's really the discomfort between island a to island b and it's that throttle and that's like literally those two that window and the window of tolerance and and learning to sit with the fear of decisions and all the different things that's it's an experiential experience when I work with clients because they have to be able to feel it so that they can recognize it, become aware of it, and then support a new pattern within the brain so that you're like, oh, I know what's going on here. Oh, I know why I'm this. Oh gosh, I know why I snapped at my kids. Oh my gosh, I know why I'm scrolling my phone and I really don't want to play, you know, Legos with them. Like yeah. now I know why. Got it. It's not put the phone away. Let me force myself to go play Legos. It's how do I take care of myself so that I have the mental health I need to be present for my kids?